The Minnesota Wild are off to their best start in franchise history after yet another win, this time beating the Arizona Coyotes 5-2. to two. At what point in the season do we stop and enjoy what we've seen from this team so far? That time is now on today's episode of Locked on Wild. <laughs> You're Locked On Wild, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen every day. And just as a reminder, we are free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we recap the 5-2 to two win for the Wild over the Arizona Coyotes. Their fourth straight win that gives the Wild their best start in team history. So we take some time to simply appreciate what we have seen from this Wild team so far and what sets them apart from previous versions of this franchise. My name is Seth Topal, host of Locked on Wild, veteran Minnesota sports content producer with over a decade's worth of experience covering Minnesota sports and happy to be at the helm of Locked on Wild for my first full season after hopping on the show last year. Thank you for tuning into today's episode of Locked on Wild. I want to first give a shout out, had a chance to go to the game last night in person to uh, to see the Wild dispatch the uh, Arizona Coyotes. Uh, and that was part of the 10,000 Takes Cup Snake event. Shout out to the boys for uh, getting it done. Officially the longest Cup Snake ever on record uh, being measured. So we did it. Got it done. Congratulations to 10,000 Takes. Uh, a fun event, a fun night. Um, and uh, great to see uh, a bunch of people that I've had a chance to meet uh, throughout the uh, the course of the uh, the last season and a half. Um, a great night by all and a great night by the Minnesota Wild as well. On my way home from the game, was trying to figure out what angle to uh, to go with for today's episode. Because let's be honest, we saw once again uh, a thing that has, uh, you know, I'm sure led to some people being annoyed with what we saw in tonight's game. Um, the uh, the Wilds getting off to a little bit of a slow start. Arizona coming in after a win uh, in their previous game. So they were uh, rolling on all cylinders. And they came in and they uh, were able to evenly skate with the Wild uh, throughout the, uh, the start of the game. Uh, but that turned pretty quickly as the Wild were able to quickly rattle off three goals in the second period in route to that 5-2 to two win. And so, you know, I was thinking to myself, I could go the route of being uh, upset and being critical with the uh, the start to the game and that, again, we got to try to figure out a way to not do that as many times as this team has done it. But then when uh, listening to Minnesota Wild fan line, uh, Pat Micheletti and uh, Brandon Molesky listening to them break down the game, the thought entered my head as it was mentioned that with 31 points in their first 21, uh, 22 games, the Minnesota Wild are off to their best start in team history. It, uh, it got me thinking that, you know, yes, it would be nice if the Minnesota Wild would get off to better starts. And we have seen that a couple of times this year, but we've also seen the tendency for this team to uh, to get behind, maybe give up an early goal, and uh, and have to try to battle back throughout the course of uh, of the rest of the game. And while that used to be a staple of the Jacques Lemaire, the Mike Yo, the Bruce Boudreaux led Minnesota Wild teams that weren't super offensively inclined and had to hope for that early lead so that they could then play their style to try to finish off the game and uh, and add goals when the time was right. 
maybe this current iteration just does not have to do that to succeed. I mean, they they have near the tops in the league in terms of come from behind wins. And so we, at this point, I think are just seeing a team that is capable of uh, of playing from behind and is capable of taking the best punch that the opposing team has to offer and dishing it right back. And that was perfectly on display for the Wild against the Coyotes, that 1-1 tie um, throughout the uh, the course of the first period that then led to four straight goals for the Wild. Um, the 1-0 lead for Arizona, I should say, which led to four straight goals for the Minnesota Wild before Arizona scored in the third period. That is, I think, just kind of what is going to define this current version of the Minnesota Wild as a team that is never out of it and a team that has the ability to come back from any deficit. And, you know, we look at some of the, um, some of the other things that factor in to, uh, to that uh, being the mantra of this team. I think it allows them to play with way less pressure on uh, on players up and down the roster because previous seasons, if the Wild would give up a goal, they would feel as though there was pressure for them to, you know, score. Uh, on any given night, I think the Wild would have preferred to win games two to one or uh, or two nothing. Uh, somewhere in that range. So you give up an early goal and there's pressure to try to score, you know, three times, four times. Um, and this wild team is just, the, they are not under any pressure if they give up a one or a two goal deficit right off the bat. And so it, it gets to where we're flipping between finding things to analyze and be critical of of this team's current performance as to now trying to identify the things that this team does incredibly well and you know we'll we'll go through these the rest of the episode as well but um i think we're seeing a team that has identified the areas that it struggles with and identified parts of the lineup where they may not be the strongest with people out. Obviously there are players that uh, that you'd like to have in the lineup that are not playing at this moment, but you know, this team just up and down is bought in and they're able to overcome really any adversity to, uh, to be able to tie, win, send games into overtime with uh, even as little as a second left on the clock. I think it is no accident that this team is off to the best start in franchise history because I think the product on the ice is really playing a style of hockey that is uh, conducive to a lot of wins, especially with some of the other factors that are going on. Uh, we will dive in a little bit further to some of those areas, you know, other spots that I think we can point to that would have been um, – Big problem spots with uh, with previous seasons of Minnesota Wild Hockey. Uh, we'll take a look at how the Wild have overcome that uh, next here on Locked on Wild. Got beard? Get primal. You heard me right. Got beard? Get primal. If you or someone you care about has a beard, it needs to get primal. Maybe you're the guy who has never considered the benefits of treating your beard with products. Primal Origin Oils will stop the itch and make your beard look healthy and groomed. Their goal is to help others look good and live healthier lives through the use of natural oils. The products are free from harmful synthetic ingredients and with low impact on the planet. Primal Origin makes balms, oils, and whipped butter that are renowned as the best feel in beard products available. This is due to the exotic carrier blend with oils like raspberry seed, rose hip and chia seed oil. All products are fair trade certified and handcrafted in the United States. So head to primaloriginoils.com and learn more about their full line of beard care products. Use the code locked on for a 20% discount at checkout. The combo kits make a great holiday gift 
And if you're shopping for yourself, you will be glad you did. Not only are the products and dedication to quality top notch, the company was founded for a noble cause. The founder, Stephen's mother, was injured in a car accident and the company was started to pay for her treatment and recovery. We know that every company claims to have the best, but Primal Origin Oils challenges you to compare their ingredients and feel in beard to other companies you've used. They promise you will see and feel the difference. Remember the code LOCKDOWN gets you 20% off at PrimalOriginOils.com. You can use the promo code LOCKDOWN at checkout for 20% off at PrimalOriginOils.com. This holiday season, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar. That is, of course, Built Bar, filled with so many holiday goodies, rich with decadent flavor, covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, and high in protein. You get the best of both worlds with delicious and healthy Built Bars. There are so many flavors to choose from, you'll have a hard time picking which to go with. Will you have raspberry or mint brownie, cherry or double chocolate, cookies and cream, or peanut butter brownie? Built Bar gives you that extra fuel you need to bust down those mall doors and battle all of the holiday shoppers. Or if you're just standing in endless shopping lines, Built Bar can give you that extra something to keep you going. So throw one in your po uh, pocket or purse. You never know when you're going to need it. Are you friends with Santa? Well, tell Santa to throw a few Built Bars in those stockings. With so many flavors, they'd make anyone's Christmas morning a happy one. You want to cozy up with something warm? Here's a holiday tip. Dip your Built Bar into piping hot cup of coffee. Let it melt and give a little bit of your beverage to that Built Bar flavor. Plus, you'll have a nice melty Built Bar to go with it. Be sure to have a couple napkins on hand, though, to clean up the potential mess. So head to BuiltBar.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off of your order. Again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild. And again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. Just as a reminder, Locked on Wild is free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. So let's dive a little further into this notion of the Minnesota Wild off to the best start in team history. Well, how can that be considering that, for instance, the power play is just continuing to not lead to additional goals for the Minnesota Wilds? It's a valid point because, uh, let's be honest, after a hot start to the power play, the, uh, the Wilds numbers have continued to drop, 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 drop. Um, to where they now, I think, are somewhere around 25th in the league uh, in terms of uh, power play goals. Now, against the uh, Arizona Coyotes, there were a couple of opportunities for the Wilds to uh, come away with power play goals. And uh, as we look at the team stats in this one, uh, the Wild 0 for 4 on the power play. So, Power play numbers continuing to drop. But I think one of the byproducts that we've seen from this Minnesota Wild team that has led to the power play not being a huge issue that we've talked about more extensively is the fact that they've been so good in five on five and six on five empty net situations. Uh, the Wild have, in games that they've needed to, been able to go to that extra attacker and uh, pull the goalie and get one or two goals to get back in or tie games uh, that in which they were trailing by you know one or multiple goals heading into the third period. As mentioned, the five on five numbers for this wild team are really good as well. And so you know they're winning those extra strength or those even strength battles to where they don't really need to uh, to go uh, to an additional attacker. Um, to sustain offense or to get offensive chances and to get goals on the scoreboard. They're doing enough of that in five on five as it is. So yes, that's something that the wild will need to um, have be better as the season wears on. But honestly, best starts to a season in Minnesota wild history because their five on five has been so 
dominant that it's able to offset some of those leaky power play numbers. Uh, on the flip side, the penalty kill for the Minnesota Wilds. Not great to start the year, but it has really come on strong over the last several games. Arizona was 0 for 2 on the power play uh, in the game here um, against the Wilds. And I think what has led to the Wilds being so much better on the penalty kill is another byproduct of being off to the best start in team history and having everybody on the roster fully buy in to what this team is selling. I think it has been an investment into a little bit of a change in style on the penalty kill. I think so often uh, the Wilds struggle and other teams struggle on the penalty kill from trying to do a little too much uh, to where you know, you're not taking the immediate, easy, clear opportunity uh, as opposed to trying to do a little too much, maybe try to uh, to dangle one off the boards uh, in which it gets intercepted by the opponent and leads to additional pressure in the defensive zone. I think the Wild have simplified things on the, uh, the penalty kill, which has led to them being able to uh, just be great. I think now they are... 11 for their last 12 in uh, in penalty kills um, over the course of this four-game winning streak. And, you know, you even boil it down there. 12 power play opportunities for opponents in four games. So the Wilds are taking, on average, like six penalty minutes a game. Really is way more easy to overcome than uh, some of these early games in the season in which the Wilds are taking, you know, 12, 14 penalty minutes a game. Those numbers have come down, and as a result, the penalty kill has been more crisp, and the penalty kill has not been relied upon nearly as much, which has led to some easier opportunities for the Wild to keep the opponent out of the net. So special teams for this Wild bunch have been trending in the right direction. Penalty kill has for sure. Power play, like we said, not a huge deal. Uh, for this team as of now, because the even strength numbers have been just so absurdly good. Um, we will finish today's episode by just looking at some examples of how players have bought in to what this team is doing as we continue to dive into the reasons that the Wild are off to the best start in franchise history. More to come on today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. BetOnline.ag has you covered all season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as the football season continues to march to the playoffs. BetOnline.ag remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. So head over to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code LOCKDOWN to receive that welcome bonus. From basketball, football, the NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. BetOnline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. And again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen every day. Uh, some other interesting things to pull away from the Wilds win against Arizona was obviously a uh, little bit of a dicey situation before the game even started. As Freddie Goudreau was placed in the COVID protocol, which led to the Wild being a man short. But again, not a coincidence that the Wild are off to the best start in team history because everybody has bought into what Dean Evason and Bill Guerin are selling to the point that you have a defenseman in Kalen Addison who steps up and plays some forward minutes uh, for this Wild team to, uh, to try to help out and to try to make it so that they didn't have to have uh, players play, um, you know, too much out of position. I mean, you uh, you look at the uh, the numbers. Addison played 13 minutes, 46 seconds uh, with the Wild. He had five hits. So, uh, yes, Addison was a little out of position and uh, maybe playing in a spot he wasn't super comfortable. But because he's bought in, just like everybody else has, into what this Wild team is doing this year, 
he just did what he does out on the ice as a defenseman as a forward. And he was just throwing his body around and uh, trying to physically frustrate members of the uh, the Coyotes. And he came away with five hits on the night. Um, and, you know, he uh, just the, the ultimate, like, I'm going to take one for the team. And, um, and I'm going to do what needs to be done in order to come away with the win. You know, we saw other examples too on the, what ended up being credited as a Kirill Kaprizov goal, which Ryan Hartman was, uh, was in front of the net and, uh, and potentially deflected it. You've got Kaprizov and Hartman pointing at each other. They didn't care who scored. The fact that the goal was scored was the important thing to both players because, it uh, it allowed the wild to uh, to further their lead and to um you know to contribute to the overall win um dean evison has said it multiple times throughout uh, post games and throughout uh, leading up to games basically throughout the entire season is that they've got a bunch of guys in the ice that are concerned about doing what they need to do to help the team win as opposed to putting up those individual stats that I think we get so wrapped up in throughout the course of the season. Jordan Greenway is another perfect example of buying into what this team is selling. He hasn't really produced from a stats perspective so far this season and uh, has rightfully so been criticized by, uh, by those with the ability to do so uh, for really not you know, stepping up and contributing to the wins. And so what does Dean Evison do? He puts the Felino, Eriksonek, and Greenway line back together, and things just start to click because those guys have great chemistry, and Greenway starts to, you know, be more physical and just starts to impose his will on opponents. And he has the three-point night tonight with the goal and a couple of assists as well. Um... Greenway was a healthy scratch when he first came back after injury. Didn't say a thing. Was fine with it. Ended up working his way back into the lineup. And now the big thing for him is can he build off of the performance against Arizona? Can he stack some of those good games together? At the end of the day, if he is making plays that uh, that contribute to the overall win for this team, that's what he's going to be all about. And, you know, just a perfect example of another different guy stepping up and helping contribute to a win uh, this season. I mean, look at who scored the goals in this game tonight. Uh, Jewel Eriksson Ek is ninth. Kirill Kaprizov is seventh. Jordan Greenway is first. Jonas Brodine is third. Marcus Foligno, his ninth. On a previous iteration of this Minnesota Wild team, I don't think you get the diversity of scoring, but I also don't think that previous teams would have been able to weather their top guys not being the ones scoring. This Wild team not only has fully bought in, but this wild team has a level of depth that has elevated the play of everybody for the most part on the, uh, the NHL roster because the wild are in positions where if players don't play particularly well, they can go grab somebody from Iowa to, uh, to step in and fill a spot. And they're going to give you everything that they have um, to try to stay up here as opposed to just being a temporary replacement for an injury or just inconsistent performance. Um, th that is another wrinkle to this mix. And so you take all of these things, you know, offsetting the, the special teams being better on the penalty kill and the power play starting to trend in the wrong direction, offsetting that by just dominating in five on five, um, having guys up and down the lineup that are ready to step in and, uh, and take over games. Having players that are ready to step in and play out of position, uh, out of necessity to uh, to help the team come away with the win. It all leads to the fact that this wild team is fully bought into what's going on and uh, they are ready to do what needs to be done 
in order to uh, to help this team achieve its ultimate goal, which, and this is a little bit of a hot take, but after what I've seen, I need to correct my attitude about this team heading into this season. We all thought that they were going to take a little bit of a step back after uh, the losses in the offseason uh, in terms of free agents and trade. All thought that uh, that things were going to take a step backwards um, coming into the season. But I'm willing to completely edit that thought process and I'm ready to uh, to do you one better. I know 22 games in, there's still a lot that can happen in the final 60 games of this season. That being said, this is a Minnesota Wild team that is going to go, that is currently on a run, that is going to go on a run, and is going to make a statement in these Stanley Cup playoffs. I don't know what that statement will be, but a statement will be made by this wild team because this is maybe the most invested and bought in team that we have seen in years. Getting the most out of this roster is Dean Evison. Bill Guerin is making the has made the moves that have put this team in a position to succeed and everyone from GM to coach to players all the way down to the fourth line who has excelled all season. The third line D pairing who has excelled so far this season. Everyone up and down the roster has fully bought into what this team is doing. And so I tell you, after watching this team play on a night in which they beat the Arizona Coyotes by a score of five to two, we are in the midst of seeing something special happen this season. And it has nothing to do with the flow of this game. It was just another ho-hum game in the course of a Minnesota Wild season, but it is the cherry on top of the best start for the Minnesota Wild in their franchise's history. And so we need to take note of that, and we need to appreciate what we're seeing from the Minnesota Wild as it continues to unfold, because I'm predicting, I'm taking a look out, looking into the future, And I see this team making a deep run that we are going to really enjoy. So I'm telling you folks to close today's episode. Enjoy what you've seen from the wild so far. Get on board. There's plenty of room here for you to uh, to hop on and enjoy. We will take you on a journey. And it is going to be a fun-filled journey that this team uh, is, is embarking on. But as I said... It's going to be a very successful one, and so you'll want to be here to see it unfold because it's going to be good. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Didn't really have anything that I wanted to go in-depth on for today's episode, but I just wanted to hammer home the point that this Minnesota Wild team has got something special this year. So enjoy it. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure to head over to Locked On Bets to get the lowdown on all of your favorite NHL teams so that you can maximize your bet return. The Locked On Bets podcast is available wherever you listen to podcasts, just like Locked On Wild. We're available wherever you listen to podcasts, as well as on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Make sure to follow us on all four of those platforms. We have all new content coming for you uh, throughout the course of the week to uh, keep you as up to date as possible on your favorite team, the Minnesota Wild. And if a puck drops in the state of hockey, Locked on Wild has you covered with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Podcast Network.